Hey everybody, I'm Evan Abrams, and today we're going to learn how to make pie charts in After Effects, which is why you're inside an oven. So pie charts are great for showing things like what percentage of people enjoy what kinds of pie, or what percentage of people enjoy putting cheddar cheese on their pie. Um, that's pretty gross, but uh, you know, enjoy doing whatever you do with that, but I'm just here to show you how to make charts. So I'm going to close up this oven and, uh, you know, set it to 350 and bake us up some pie charts. So uh, fire up After Effects and let's get to it. So in After Effects, make a new composition, and it doesn't really matter the size or anything, just make a new one. We're going to make the pie shapes first. So those are just made out of circles, so go up to your Ellipse tool. Double click there and make some circles and pick our first color. That's good enough color. And now go into the ellipse, ellipse path, and uncheck the linkage between the two size properties and put them down to like a 750. That should do. And you can link them again if you want, but that doesn't matter. And we will rename this wedge one. Now we're going to make five wedges in total, and each one will be controlled by a separate thing on a control layer. So let's make that layer. So we make a new null object, call that object control. And on the control, we want to put in a slider control, and this slider control will control, say control enough times, but this will determine how far along the uh, completion of the pie wedge is from say zero to upwards of 100. So I'm gonna type in 25 for now. So when that's at 25, we want this wheel here to be 25% complete or 25% blue. So go back to your wedge and we are going to give it the radial wipe and uh, make sure you use the transform radial wipe and not the animation preset. So just drag that on there. And the transition completeness, you can see, goes from 0% up to 100, which is kind of the reverse of what we want. So what we would like is to link this to the slider control, and uh, we'd like it also to go counterclockwise, or I would, if you'd rather go the other way, do whatever. It's not important to this lesson. Alt, click on that, and uh, that'll bring up its expression. And we would like to link this to the control layer, so I'm just going to lock the effects control there, go down here to our enter line, and then pick whip that to this. So we're saying transition completeness, you are now whatever slider control is, but that's not totally what we want. We want it to be 100 minus whatever that is, meaning it'll be 100 minus the value here, in this case 25, leaving 75% there. So 100 less 25 is 75, and that shows 25% of the circle as being on. Perfect, you're doing quite well so far. So now the other thing is that we want the wedges when they come on, each wedge to start where the other wedge stops. So that means that we want basically the uh, start angle of every other wedge to reference not only the transition completeness, but also the start angle of this wedge. So if this one moves its start point, then so do the others. So go to wedge one, duplicate it, and we've created wedge two. And uh, for wedge two, set its color to, uh, let's say red, that's a good red. And then we're gonna go into the effects, gonna do its radial wipe, and we are going to be altering its start angle. So I'm gonna be typing in an expression here and referencing things in wedge one. So let me just full screen this for a minute, um, just so we can look at what we're doing here. And I do that by hitting the console button, set squiggly under the escape key. Now, what we're gonna be doing here is in this expression for the start angle, we're going to be referencing uh, the completeness here and the start angle. So let me just put in some variables. So I'm gonna go P equals and P for percentage, maybe, that's not important. P equals, pick whip it down to that, good. And then hit a semicolon to end that. And then we're gonna go A equals, and then pick whip down to the start angle here, good, and semicolon there. Now we're gonna use these two variables to make something. And we're gonna say 360, because it's 360 degrees. And then we will multiply that by and remember your bed mass from math class in brackets, we're gonna put P, so whatever percentage of the completion it was, divided by negative 100, which is gonna make it uh, 0.75. 
and then minus that, so it's going to be minus 0 0.75, and it's going to be 360 times negative 0 0.75 will yield the start angle, which will be the angle where this is. And trust me, it's just math. And then we're going to also add uh, whatever A is. So then offset it by however much A is, hit return, and then we look back at what we've got, and so far so good. So since both of these things reference the same slider, we can see that as we grow and shrink this, then uh, that changes. But we need one for each of these, so go to slider control and uh, duplicate it. So we have slider control two. We know that for wedge two, we want it to look at slider two, so I'm just gonna hit the U button to bring up all the things we've changed on this layer so far. So we've got uh, this thing here that's saying reference the control layer, and just change slider control there to slider control space two, or whatever you've called that. That's good, and now we can change both of these uh, independently. Now let's go ahead and also make these reference not the name of the layer, but the layer as relative to wedge two. So what I mean by that is, instead of referencing something called wedge one, we're going to tell it to reference index plus one. And what that does is it means, instead of looking at a layer that has a name, just look at the reference number. I'm reference layer two, but I'd like to look at reference layer three, so two plus one equals three, and that's index of two plus one equals three, and that'll put you at referencing this layer. So do the same for the other wedge one reference, and that is index plus one. Hit enter, or sorry, return, and then you're all good, nothing's changed. So when you duplicate wedge two, it's gonna create another wedge that has the same properties as wedge two, except wedge three is now referencing wedge two in the same way wedge two reference wedge one because of that index plus one thing. Now let's also change its color to like a yellow or something, good. And then uh, we'll just uh, make another slider control, duplicate that, make sure that this is now pointing at slider control three, and then give this a value like that. And now we're gonna make a couple more. So duplicate it, change its color to be like green, good. Make sure that it is looking for something that we're gonna call slider control four. I think you're getting the hang of it now, right? And duplicate this again, and duplicate this again. Slider control five, slider control five and give it a new color. I don't really know, I guess like a purple maybe. Good, and that is super fantastic. So now what you wanna do is make sure all of these sort of add up to 100. So let's say this one's like 35, maybe this one here could be, uh, could be like 20, and then uh, 35, 20, uh, 15, it could be 10, mm -hmm. there we go. So this kind of rounds out a complete graph, and now we have to animate it. One of the reasons that we used all of these sliders on the same control layer is because we've put a bunch of in here, so if you want to quickly call up keyframes, you're going to be calling up a whole lot of other nonsense that you don't necessarily want. So we go into the control layer here, and we set keyframes on all of those hit U, and then you can bring them all up. And uh, let's just take those, drag them forward a bit in time, and then set all of their starting values at zero. And as you can see, they come on in this nice kind of rainbowy thing, right? So maybe we only want to take about 20 frames to bring this stuff on, so pull that ahead, take these keyframes. We're going to easy ease them. We're gonna go into there and just pull that like so, so they have an interesting shape to their motion, and then that kind of comes on like that. And then an important step is to stagger the motion. So we know slider control is the first one, bring it on, and then two, and then three, and then four, and I'm sure you'll do a better job at staggering these in a uniform way, but uh, boo there you go. So they kind of animate on in that kind of a way. Now, I think you've pretty much done it, so that's all you need to do, but there's one more thing that I'm gonna warn you about. If you wanna move this, and when I say if you wanna move this, I mean if you wanna put it anywhere but the center of the screen, do not click and drag it, because as you can see, weird things start to happen. That's because the radial wipe always references the center of the image or the center of wherever 
that thing is hanging out. So if you can see here in the effects, the radial wipe has a wipe center, which you can move, but you don't really want to. Now we could have just parented this to the position of the layer, and you're totally fine to do that. But usually what I do is I just pre-compose all of it and then move it around. And then you can do things like you can go uh, layer, you can go layer styles, you can add like a drop shadow to this if you so desire. Let's kind of beef that up a little bit. Oop, kind of like that. So you've got a drop shadow. You could, on each of these, you could go layer, layer styles, add a stroke, add a stroke to all of those. Um, make sure that the stroke is actually something cool maybe. Uh, thicken it up a little bit. Make sure it's on the center. That would be really helpful. Something like that maybe. Change that color. Pure white is so last year. And then uh, there we go. So hey, that looks pretty good and actually pretty stupid. But uh, nonetheless, you've got a pie chart. You can move it around. You have all the tools you need to animate it in interesting ways. Uh, play around with that. Have fun. And uh, hopefully this didn't take up too big of a percentage of your day. And if it did, why don't you make me a pie graph about it? So I'm Evan Abrams. If you enjoy this uh, pie graphy tutorial, you can use it for other things that aren't pie graphs if you really want. But uh, hopefully it's helpful. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. If you have trouble with the tutorial, just let me know. If you're interested in After Effects, check out the Facebook page. Uh, follow me on Twitter at EC Abrams. And subscribe to this channel if you want to see new stuff every week. Thank you so much for watching. Comment, rate, subscribe, or whatever or don't, it's totally up to you, and uh, I'll see you next week or somewhere around the internet. Thanks, and have a nice day.